lots of music. I'm going to talk about how you can play a song called For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield. And it starts off with these cool little harmonic licks where you can kind of take the first finger and kind of lightly touch the 12th fret and actually, or the string on the 12th fret or near the 12th fret and kind of get a chime sound. And this is a little weird. You're not actually pressing it into the 12th fret. You're kind of just lightly touching the, the 12th fret. Um, and kind of bring it out kind of a harmonic sound. There's a couple things you could do too to make that a little bit brighter, kind of project better, where you could take the pick and kind of almost think about it kind of flicking outward, which is a little weird. You're trying to get the string to vibrate more into the guitar. So you're trying to almost do like a sideways attack to it. Or you could try and bring your pick closer back to the to the saddle, actually in kind of the bridge area. And sometimes that, that can kind of help bring that out a little bit better. And then we take that idea and then we go to the seventh fret and kind of do that same idea, actually kind of lightly touching the, the seventh fret and kind of alternating between that. It can be a really cool way to kind of intro the tune. Or if you wanted to throw in other harmonics, actually throw in the top two strings, might be kind of a cool idea if you're looking for some harmony behind that. And the bass notes that would back that up would start on the low E string, kind of open, and then the open A. So kind of working an E note and an A note. And you can almost kind of hybrid pick this, kind of pick for the bases, fingers for the notes above, and make it almost a two-part idea. Kind of working it that way, if you kind of dig on that. Or just making those single notes actually sounds a little bit more like the recording. So you'll be able to play around with that for the intro. And you'll hear this cool little bass lick come in, where you play low E, second fret on the A string, and do a hammer on the fourth fret. So I'm kind of playing the second fret on the A, and kind of putting my finger down to carry the sound to fourth. And then we go to second on the D, and then back to four on the A, and then open A. Almost like a, almost a little blues lick, actually, kind of like P, two, four, D, four, and then we go to open A, and then you can even kind of come back and throw that two, four, two, four idea back in on that. So kind of an E idea, A idea. Or you could just back that up with chords and you'd start on an E major chord. Let me play E major. First finger goes to the G on the first fret, second finger on the A second fret, third finger on the D string second fret. If you strum all those together, that sounds an E major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the E note, we go to an A note and we, and we can back that up with an A major chord. We can do first finger on the D second. Second finger on the G second, third finger on the B string second, kind of party on the second fret. And if you show them all those together, it sounds an A major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And a lot of our, our, our verse actually is just kind of alternating between the E major and the A major. And there's a couple different strumming options you may want to think about through the tune. You could kind of work it as almost an eight down count. And I'm kind of adding in a little bit of muting that made that a little sneaky. Kind of that strut patterns for a 4-4 four, four like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we took the E and just tried that a lot. You know? down, down. I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot of the beat, right now we're dividing that beat into two parts. One, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a sixteenth note is, is where you divide it into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's called the sixteenth note. And one of my favorite sixteenth note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. And what I mean by that is if you take the E and do a down for four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you can do on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do a down on one, down on three, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, down, 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 down. And then on the third beat, you do an up on two, down on three. So one, two, three, four, one, two, one, up, down. And then on the last beat, you're going down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, down.
into our verse chorus, or, or into our, our main verse chorus, and we start off with our E major, and then we go to our A major, and we do that three times, and then we go to an E major, and then you could go right back to A, or if you wanted to, later on, you kind of hear this cool little punch where we go from an A major to a G major chord, we play G major. First finger goes to the A on the second fret, second finger on the low E string third fret, and third finger on the high E string third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and it sounds really happy. Now you may also want to think about putting the third finger on the B string third, pinky on the high E third, kind of working that for your G major three two, two. And it's kind of this cool little punch where you may want to do kind of a four down on the A, four down on the G. And I don't think it happens in the first verse course, but you definitely hear it on, on the second or the third. So if we tried it through that way, you'd have the E, First finger goes the G on the second fret, the second finger on the high E second fret, and third finger on the B string third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the D we go to our A major chord, but then we go to a C major chord. And when we play C major, first finger goes the B on the first fret, the second finger on the D string second fret, third finger on the A string third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E, sounds a C major chord and sounds really, really happy. Um, so, and through that part, it's almost like a halving idea. It's kind of like that A, G push. So you may want to do just kind of a four down count on each of those chords. Or if you're doing the down, down, up, up, down, up, you do kind of a down, down, up on each chord. Or if you're doing the 16th, it'd be kind of a down, 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 up on each chord. Kind of intro part it's kind of, kind of going, coming back. Now one other thing I think about adding to the song though is bass notes and a lot of times on that first down of the down down up up down up or the down 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 up up down down up, you can throw in a bass note for the chord. So on the E you'd have the low E for the bass down up down down on the A you'd have the A string for the bass. On the D you'd have the D for the bass. On the C you'd have the A for the bass. And if you're doing that G push you'd have the low E for the bass. piece of our intro, so we're back in our E chord, and our A band, and you hear this cool little arpeggio actually kind of come in there, um, where you can play 4th fret on the G string, and do a hammer on the 6th fret, and then high E on the 4, and then we go back to 4 on the G as kind of a hammer on idea, the 6, and then back to 4, and then we go to 6 on the G string, and then we go to 5th fret on the B, if you want to kind of play around with that leg. 
kind of hear like a tag of that kind of comes in later, kind of seventh fret bend on the B, and then back to fifth fret on the B. So if you wanted to, you could kind of play around with that leg. Like, might be kind of a cool thing to add in. Or if you want to solo over that first part actually and through the tune actually, it might be kind of cool to, to use an E major pentatonic scale. Where, where you could go to low E on the 9th fret, and then we go to 12th fret, and then we go to uh, 9 to 11 on the A, 9 to 11 on the D, and then 9 to 11 on the G, and then 9 to 12 on the B, and then 9 to 12 on the high E. That's kind of your pattern one of pentatonic, and you're playing C sharp and E, and then F sharp and G sharp, and then we're playing a, a D, <laughs> and then C sharp, and then we're back to the E. So we got E, F sharp, G sharp, B, C sharp, E. So you might want to kind of play around with that. It's kind of a jam scale idea through the um, And then from there, though, we'll be going back into kind of our verse. So we're back to E. Basics of how you get strung through for what it's worth by Buffalo Springfield. So, good luck!